Hello, my lovely young scientist. Welcome to Joy Learning Basic Classroom. My name has always been Eric Ousu. You can also call me Sir Love Ghana. This is Basic Sis Classroom. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. I Joy Learning TV and watch most of our lessons over there. All right, so today we are going to look at functions of carbon. Functions of carbon. You know, in previous class, class five, we talk about uses of carbon dioxide. But this, we are talking about functions of carbon. All right, so let's get the ball rolling for today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the term carbon cycle and to list at least four examples of materials in the environment that contains carbon. And number three, state the functions of carbon in the environment. And four, explain the term global warming. And four, state the ways of preventing global warming. All right. Now, I want to talk about carbon. What is carbon? Carbon is made up of just one type of atom. And this means carbon is an element. The symbol for carbon is C, capital C. Atoms of carbon can be arranged in different patterns. And this means that there are different forms of carbon. The human body is about 20% of carbon. So your body consists of 20% carbon. And this carbon is not present as an element, but is joined with atoms of other elements, such as hydrogen and oxygen. Remember when we were talking about carbon dioxide, we say carbon and oxygen coming together in basic five classroom. All living things consist mostly of carbon containing compounds. All living things consist mostly of carbon. Now, each form of carbon has its own properties. So, for example, you see, diamond is carbon. So, diamond is transparent. It can be cut into shapes that sparkle for jewelry. It is also extremely hard. That is diamond, which is a carbon. Now, we talk about Graphite is also a carbon. So one, we said diamond, and then graphite. The atoms in graphite are arranged in layers that slide over each other. This makes graphite slippery. It is sometimes used instead of oil to lubricate locks. Graphite is the only non-metal element that conducts electricity. So with your pencil, what you have in your pencil is made of graphite, and it is carbon. Now before we come to carbon cycle, we have to understand why carbon is so important in the first place. We all need energy to survive and do things. Where does this energy come from? And you know, our main source of energy is the sun. But other than plants, algae, and few types of bacteria, no other living organism can use sunlight directly as source of energy. Other than these organisms, no other organisms can convert the energy obtained from sun into the nutrient required for their survival. So all of us depend on plants for our nutrition and survival. And plants in turn require what? Carbon dioxide, along with sunlight to make their own food. So plants depends on what or uses carbon dioxide. So you know carbon is the carbon and then oxygen. So without carbon dioxide, plants wouldn't make food and we would have no direct source of energy for our own survival. Without plants preparing their food, we, we cannot get any food to depend on and life will perish on this earth. And that is why carbon is so important. The carbon cycle is the process where carbon is recycled through the ecosystem. All right, so the process whereby carbon is circulated through our environment is what 
we call carbon cycle. And it ensures regular supply of carbon within the environment, or carbon dioxide in the environment. Carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is used up by plants along with sunlight in the process of photosynthesis. This is the process which breaks down carbon dioxide into compounds that can be used as nutrition by the plants. In this process, plants release oxygen as what? A byproduct. So when plants take in carbon dioxide, they release oxygen as byproduct, which we take in during what? Respiration. Animals and humans consume these plants, and thus the carbon is transferred from the plant to animals and humans. So when plants use this carbon dioxide or carbon to prepare their food, we in turn what feed. Animals and man feed on these plants. So when we eat these plants, that means we take in this carbon into our system. From animals and humans, the carbon is sent back to the atmosphere through the process of respiration. So take note of this. So after we have taken this carbon or carbon dioxide into our system, we also release this carbon into the environment through the process known as what? Respiration. So animals breathe out carbon dioxide. Humans also bring out what? Carbon dioxide. And release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Other than respiration, when plants, animals, or humans die, their remains decay and decompose. And carbon is transferred to earth when this happens. So one way where carbon can be transferred or released into our environment is decomposition of organism. So like plants and animals and humans, when they die, the carbon in them is also released into the atmosphere. So let's take note of this. Plants use this carbon that was to repair their food. Now when animals and man eat this plant, they take in what? The carbon in them. Now, when we also respire, respiration means that you bring out, you take in oxygen, then you bring out what? Carbon dioxide. You also release this carbon into the environment. Now, when animals, plants, and humans also die, the carbon in them also gets decomposed or gets rotten, and it is also released into the environment. So, let's take note of that. Now, when the remains have been around for thousands of years. They become fossil fuel. So, like the fossil fuel remains of animals that have been subjected to heat and pressure for millions of years, they turn into this petroleum, what we call fossil fuel, petrol, coal, and natural gas. And also, burning of wood. Fossil fuels combustion, etc., are processes which transfer carbon back to the atmosphere. This, released in the, this is released in the form of carbon dioxide. Now, burning of wood also releases carbon into the environment. So, as we can see in our screen, the processes were by carbon gets into the environment. So for example, animals, decomposition of animals, animal respiration. So when animals also respire, they release carbon into the carbon dioxide into the environment. Plants, also decomposition of plants also gets carbon dioxide into the environment. And now this carbon dioxide is also used by plants in the presence of sunlight for hot photosynthesis to prepare their own food. And also in the ocean, when they get heated up, they also release carbon dioxide into the environment. So this process is what we call carbon cycle, the rate or the process at which carbon is released into the environment. So combustion, that is burning of fossil fuel, 
in various factories. Fumes from exhaust pipe also release carbon dioxide into the environment. And this is what we call the carbon cycle. So the sources. Carbon sources refers to all the elements, organic or inorganic, which release carbon in some form into the atmosphere. So let's look at the sources. So one source through which we can get carbon dioxide or carbon into the environment is what? Volcanic eruption. So on your screen, you can see volcanic eruption. This is one way we can get carbon into the environment when it's also combined with oxygen, then we have carbon dioxide. Now, respiration of animals and humans, they release what? Carbon dioxide into the environment. And also, decay of dead matter, decomposition of organism, can get carbon dioxide into our environment. Now we have combustion of fossil fuel, burning of fossil fuels in our cars, various factories, and all that will also release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And remember, it is this carbon dioxide that the plants also use during photosynthesis. But when it becomes too much, the plants cannot use all of them and we will be in trouble. The warm water bodies also release carbon dioxide into the environment. Now, importance or significance of carbon. Carbon are an essential part of the cells of all living organisms. Everything, for example, carbohydrates, sugars, our DNA, our cells, all have carbon. So, food eat contains carbon, sugar contains carbon, your DNA contains carbon, and our cells all contain carbon. Our weight has what well, 20% of carbon. So your body consists of 20% of carbon. So let's take note of that. Carbon is necessary for many human activities. Example, in industry, for generating energy, combustion in automobiles. So in generating energy too, we use carbon over there. Carbon also forms carbon dioxide, which is greenhouse gas. So as we learned earlier, carbon dioxide is released into, or carbon mix, mixes with what? Oxygen to form carbon dioxide, which is released into the environment, and which is the greenhouse gas. And as I said, it traps some amount or some level of heat for us to survive on this planet. Without this and other greenhouse gases in small quantities, the earth would freeze. And no humans or living things can survive here. Diamonds are also form a form of carbon, as is coal. Coal is also a fossil fuel and is a form of carbon. Humans and animals need carbon for their metabolism in the form of carbohydrates. So when you eat carbohydrate food, you also take in carbon. And this gives you energy. Carbon is also the key ingredient of fossil fuels. So fossil fuel, the fuel obtained from remains of animals subjected to heat and pressure for millions of years. Then you get your hot, your petrol, your other form of fossil fuel, diesel, and all that. Now, when there's too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it results in global warming. Now, when we talk of global warming, it's the phenomenon of gradual increase in the atmosphere near the Earth's surface. So when the temperature of the Earth increases, what you have is global warming. So the surface, the atmosphere becomes warm up. 
and this will lead to desertification. Your trees, forests will die, melting of the ice back. The ice will begin to melt and they will add their volume to the sea and this will cause the level of the sea to rise. And cities and towns along the coastal areas will be submerged. So too much of carbon that was in the environment will cause global warming. And also there will be droughts. There will be droughts. The land will dry up. There will be no water. And farming will be affected. Now we can solve this by what? How can we solve this? We can solve this by planting more trees. Remember, I said earlier that trees use this carbon dioxide to manufacture their food. So we can plant more trees for the trees to use this to prepare their food. Now trees serve as carbon sink to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the environment. And the use of renewable source of energy. We can also uh, make use of the renewable source of energy, like the sunlight, to generate our electricity instead of depending on our fossil fuel and the rest. Because as more as we use, as much as we, we use this fossil fuel, it releases what carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And this can to what affect us. Processes that release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere are combustion, burning of fossil fuel, respiration, decomposition. And process that remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is what? Photosynthesis. So let's take note of this. Processes that release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere are what? Combustion, that is burning. Either burning of fossil fuel or anything at all. Respiration, when animals and humans respire. And decomposition of organic matter, when they get rotten, plants and animals remain, when they get rotten, they also release carbon into the atmosphere. And process that remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is what? Photosynthesis. Because plants will use that carbon dioxide to prepare their food. All right, so... I want you to do this simple exercise for me. Name six things in the environment that contain carbon. Just six. You know, we've talked about a lot. So name six things in the environment that contain carbon. And your time starts right away. Come back, so let's look at your answers. So, things some of the things that contain carbon are pencil, charcoal, fossil fuel, plants, animals, air. So, carbon dioxide, air, rock, soil, etc. So, there are a lot of things that contain carbon. So, I hope you were able to write a lot of them. All right, so let us go over our lesson for today. So we talk about carbon cycle, the rate at which, or the process at which carbon is circulated through the ecosystem. And we look at examples of materials in the environment that contains carbon. We just look at some of them. And functions of carbon in the environment. Then we look at global warming, when the temperature surrounding the earth becomes too much. 
that is what we call global warming. Then we look at ways of preventing global warming, prevention of global warming. So renewable source, let's depend on what? Renewable source of energy so that we don't get too much carbon dioxide into the environment. We must also plant what? More trees. So from today, start to plant more trees. You will also be contributing towards reducing too much carbon dioxide we have in the environment. All right. So let's have this simple assignment and then do it and send it to us. One, you are to describe how carbon circulates through the ecosystem or through the environment. And two, list three benefits of carbon to human. List three benefits of carbon to human. So do it and then send it to us at joylearningtv at myjoyonline.com. Joylearningtv at myjoyonline.com. So we have you just a minute to write this assignment down. All right, my lovely learners, so this is where time will allow us. Remember to keep learning and do this assignment and send it to us. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Joy Learning TV, at Joy Learning TV. So this has been your facilitator, Eric Ousu. Joy learning, keep learning. Bye-bye.